Hello and welcome back. This is the second episode of the small course on creating clouds using VOPs in Houdini. And as you can see, we will be working towards this result, uh, which will be, as you can see uh, in a minute or so, actually is being generated from this fascinating geometry. However, when we do our conversions and volume VOPs, it will actually look like a beautiful cloud that we see in the rendering. So let's learn how to do just that and start from the very beginning. As per usual, I'll just select everything, hit the delete key and start typing geo. Uh, by the way, as you can see, my background has uh, no grid and the background is dark. So you can uh, hover over the viewport, press the D key, go to background, uh, press dark, then disable this and jump back into our geometry because, you know, uh, clouds are easier seen when, you know, for me personally, when I work with the dark background. Anyway, so uh, let's let's actually talk about the volume maps and we start with a uninspiring box as per usual. And uh, why are we doing this? Because we are going to be from polygons and we convert it to density as discussed before. And next up, uh, we drop the volume up VVOP, volume up shift enter. Um, actually, you know what? Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, this looks good enough. Um, so we drop into the volume up, and as you can see, this is pretty much the same that we had with the point up or, you know, uh, anything else that we worked before VOP. So if you um, if you are not particularly familiar with the VOPs, uh, we have videos on VOPs, so you can kind of get started, understand what's what uh, within the realms of VOPs, what can you do, like the conversions that we will be do, doing just now. So uh, we are working with the volumes, we are working with the density, and everything we will do, we will do with the density. Now, as you can see, density goes out, and it goes to the results. And um, yeah, nothing fascinating happens. So as you might have already imagined, we can just uh, do the multiplication, do the constant, and let's write any constant we want, like zero from zero to one. As you can see, the density um, grows from zero to whatever it was, because multiplying by one doesn't change anything. Now you might be thinking, okay, uh, Maybe this can be somewhat useful to actually create something using the noise. And that is exactly right. So we can use the, for example, anti-alias noise. And as per usual, we do the position into P and the noise uh, generating uh, the results. Actually, let's do the 3D noise. Uh, the generated result will multiply the density. And as you can see, yep, something happens. Um, naturally, you can tweak the roughness to get uh, a little bit different results, change the frequency, and everything that's, you know, the usual stuff that you can do with DevOps. Now, what is interesting, why I started, oh, whoops, uh, what I, why I started it with the, with the cube, because let's imagine that we want to have like a mist that goes from from the ground to the top and it dissipates at the top. For example, like you have a city and you want like a smog fog effect. So um, let's get the uh, vector to float because I want to get the positions in the Y to control our density. So that will be Y, that would be F val 2. So Let's see what we have right now. And as you can see, something definitely happens. And if I enable the grid, uh, you will see that everything that goes from zero to uh, 0 0.5 or something. Uh, if I transform our transform, actually let's transform the VDB itself. Whoops, okay. As you can see, um, the VDB behaves as such that anything that is close to the ground becomes zero because, well, uh, what we need to do to get the inverted effect is complements. So the results will be one negative 
whatever we have in the value 2 and uh, that will be multiplied in the density and as you can see uh, we do have kind of like this misty foggy effect as you can see so just just imagine that you had um, I don't know scattered boxes or anything and you needed to have some kind of a fog going on uh, that would be the way to do that so next up uh, let's actually talk about clouds uh, because this is the interesting part here right <laughs> okay uh, we have let's Let's do this. Let's get back to our thing. And uh, in this situation, let's have a sphere. And sphere will be a polygon with a little bit of frequency. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, uh, OK, control. Um, I mean, spacebar, shift H uh, to get into the center of the viewports. And as you can see, we are having our sphere. Now, uh, just by multiplying, on the let's say turbulent noises so we have our turbulent noise uh, we do the multiplication and something definitely happens but it's more or less being controlled by how, how noise is distributed th throughout the position but if we want to actually move about and around our volumes with the noise so to speak kind of like displace the position of the voxels this will not do the trick. Uh, it will not actually create the needed wispiness of the clouds. Let's see, 0 0.03. Um, I'm tweaking the um, resolution so that we have a little bit more of, uh, you know, resolution. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go back and see the turbulence. So basically, if you tweak it like this, it will not uh, move about the voxels themselves. So how do we do that? Naturally, there is a way to do that in uh, the volume box. And what you need to search for is press tab and do the volume sample. Now, volume sample is a little bit not the, the, the most extremely obvious node out there. So uh, we start with the primitive number and the input will be the first input. And the input will be output number one, uh, you know. So, uh, if we do it like that, you can see nothing is changing, right? So, uh, we will be working with the sample position. And uh, interestingly enough, we will be um, doing it like this. So, uh, I'll delete the multiply. We have the turbulent noise. And now we are adding the actual density. Um, oops, actual, my bad, actual position. And we're adding the noise. Here we go. Um, so we are adding position and this position gets uh, read by this volume sample. And uh, what we are having as a result is actually displacing the positions of the volume using the noise, not just multiplying it, but actually displacing it. So. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can actually increase the um, amplitude and something drastic starts happening, I think, with the sparse convolution noise. Uh, let me see. It might be a little bit better to see. So now what do we lack uh, right now is that, as you can see, it's a bit too obvious that it's a sphere, right? So we have to somehow increase the this box that gets evaluated in our VDB. And uh, how, do do, how do we do that is VDB activates. We connect it to the VDB activates and connect it to the here. Now, what does VDB allow us, VDB activate allowed us is we can do the expand. And as you can see, voxels to expand. So uh, generally speaking, let's start with 10 and uh, the volume up results in this. So without width, as you can see, it doesn't come as obviously as it was the sphere. So the noise has a little bit more wiggle room to displace our geometry. Okay, so this is this is going somewhere. This is getting something right. So what we can do now is actually start building our generator of our wispy clouds. Let's see. 
uh, amplitude one roughness as the name suggests is how much of the detailization um, of the noise is going to be uh, going to be applied the turbulence is how how detailed the difference of the roughness will be um, i think i explained it a little bit better in the vops and uh, in the noises of the rendering with mantra because it's kind of like the same ish as you can see we almost are working with the shader inside of geometry which is well pretty much applicable anyway so now we have our sphere and uh, as you might have imagined if we had a box we would have actually a already pretty nice looking cloud um, let's do some setup that i previously showed so we get the sphere we collapse it quite a bit uh, then uh, let's scatter a little bit of points mm -hmm, like this okay uniform scale a little bit bigger and then we copy the points oops um, trans oops transform so basically what we are doing is we are getting this geometry we're making it slightly smaller copying onto this amount of points as you can see uh, let's relax the iterations to zero so it's kind of a bit more random and finally we merge the copies with the initial sphere so we have our this this sort of setup actually i think you know what let's scale the copies a little bit upwards and as a final thing as you might have already imagined we uh, we convert this result to polygons get it through the vdb activate and then we run the volume up and there you go pretty nice looking cloud now naturally if you think you can push it a little bit more obviously you can let's uh, drop another turbulent noise and uh, what i'm gonna do now is i will have this noise be of a small turbulence right and of a small roughness but within big amplitude so it actually kind of like you know creates these wisps and it actually is looking a little bit more uh, like a soft cloud however it does it, it it's uh, look like it looks like it lacks the detail on the outskirts of its geometry so i'll have another noise working just on that okay this is sparse convolution noise this is going to be alligator should be working fine and we will just add it on top and we will do the roughness slightly higher the turbulence slightly higher but the amplitude slightly lower let's see something like this uh, maybe 0 0.1 amplitude is too small let's increase it a little bit okay and definitely we are having the results as you can see we are having our cloud now the final thing i think uh, we can reduce the voxel size from 0 0.02 to you know twice the amount uh, right now we are working with 2 million voxels i assume that will be about 7 or 8 million voxels after do i do the conversation so that actually might take a little bit of time but the resolution will be better so let's give it time to think a little bit and as you can see uh, now we have a little bit of a problem because uh, right now the vdb activate it activates only 20 voxels but the previously voxels they were a bit more um you know they were a bit less defined so right now we have uh, to work with much more voxels to expand so it doesn't look like the initial geometry let's see what this will give us actually i think we should increase the roughness of the big noise because honestly I gotta be honest with you i don't really like how it looks so we will increase the turbulence by a matter of one or two after we calculate this as you can see it's not it's not fantastically fast especially when you're working with a lot of well this looks this looks uh, pretty good actually uh 
you know, uh, I think we have, yeah, we have 60, 63 million voxels. Oh, that's a lot of voxels, <laughs> I gotta admit. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now uh, is I will position camera something like this, hold down control, press left click, we have the area lights, and there you go, we have our cloud. Now, um, as, the, as a final thing, I actually will drop the resolution before I do anything. Give it a little bit of time. All right, so here we go. Uh, voxels to expand, let's say 30. And uh, back in our volume up, I will increase the turbulence at least by one because honestly, three, sure, it kind of looks like what I was going for, but it's it's not defined. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, let's just drop the grid. Again, control left click, drops the grid. Let's make it 10. Let's move it downwards just for the visualization purpose. And finally, we will not talk a, li um, a lot about rendering in this section. We'll talk a little bit more about rendering in the next video. For now, let's just uh, say that we will do the billowy smoke and we will uh, drag and drop the billowy smoke onto our cloud. And finally, in the render view, let's make a snap. Uh, we press render. Now it will not look uh, like this because we have different lighting scenario, but you know, uh, the lights should come from the right to the left. Uh, we should see the shadows here, should be eliminated. Pretty good right here. Let's make it evaluate the whole picture. All right, here we go. Um, for visualization purposes, I think it's not the worst idea to increase the smoke density in the shader. So let's do two, two and a half. As you can see, we have our cloud. And as a final thing, of course, you can go back, increase the resolution, tweak your, um, tweak your volume up, tweak everything you want, and there you go. So this looks, I think this looks pretty good, especially for something that's <laughs> looked like this. And after the conversion, it looks like this. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Hopefully you know a bit more about volume ops and how to create non-simulated clouds. Naturally, there is a way to simulate the clouds, but you know, since we can uh, work almost at the shader level in the geometry itself, why not do that? All right, so that was that was it for uh, part two of this uh, small, you know, a cloud dish course. And uh, hopefully I will see you in the part three where we will be talking a bit more about rendering and where we will be exporting our VDBs, importing it into Blender and rendering it with cycles, maybe with EV or something else. So this is it for this lesson. Hopefully you liked it. If you like it, press the like button. If you don't want to miss anything else, don't forget to subscribe. And I try to read every comment there is and hopefully reply if it needs a reply. So anyway, with that out of the way, hope you have a nice day and uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye.